all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, part-time four-wheel drive, small-wheel drive, part-time Paul-wheel drive. Who is Paul? Grab the wheel. We're talking about all-wheel and four-wheel drive. Like Phil Collins and Peter Gabriel, four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive seem like they could be the same thing. But if you look closer, you'll find out they're different. Sure, one of them might be more versatile, but they both have hits, and without a doubt, they've gained traction in their industry. <laughs> suit, suit. Four-wheel drive. Four wheels, and they all drive. Pretty simple. There are a few common types of this drivetrain. All-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive is divided into part-time four-wheel drive and full-time four-wheel drive. And unlike full-time employees of Donut, they all have benefits. The first four in 4x4 four four signifies how many wheels are on the vehicle. And the second number signifies how many wheels are powered. 4x4. Four four. So, using that system, a rear or a front-wheel drive is technically a 4x2. I know that's a hard concept to grasp, but don't give up. All-wheel drive systems have been developed for years in different markets and implemented in many vehicle platforms under a, a tons of different names. There's no standardized system put in place to designate proper terminology, so I'm going to do my best to get everything right. Oftentimes, designations like 4x4s, they're developed as a way to market the car rather than accurately describe the functionality of the drivetrain, which makes it even more confusing. And luckily, I'm here to help you understand them a little better. Shouldn't be living in a land of confusion when it comes to drive. Drivetrain. All-wheel drive systems have some advantages over two-wheel drivetrains. Primarily, traction. Cars and trucks that have power going to all four wheels inherently have more traction than vehicles that just use two powered wheels. In a rear wheel car, if you find yourself, say, stuck in mud, as I often do, the rear wheels lose traction. Rear wheel drive cars use open differentials, which means that power is transferred to the wheel with the least resistance. So the wheels that are slipping are going to get all the power. And additionally, the weight of the engine is on the opposite side of the car. It means those wheels aren't going anywhere. You're going to need a tow, buddy. A front wheel drive car has a little bit better traction than rear wheel because it pulls the car instead of pushing it. The weight of the engine's right over the powered wheels, giving them more grip. You might be able to wriggle out of that mud in a front wheel drive car, but not as easily as you would in all wheel drive. With power going to all four wheels, more even weight distribution, and a heavier body, an all wheel drive vehicle is a tough mudder. Literally. That reminds me, I gotta call my mudder. Also, we know that putting power through the wheels creates more friction. So if you're getting power to four wheels, when you accelerate, you're actually producing more grip on every wheel. So it makes sense, even if you're not in the mud. But when all four wheels are going at the same time, it can produce some unwanted side effects, mainly binding. When power is distributed evenly among the four wheels, they spin at the same speed. And that's not a problem if you drive in a straight line or on some slippery surfaces, but when you turn, the front wheels spin faster because they're traveling a greater distance. Additionally, the outside wheels travel at a greater distance than the inside wheels, which means all the wheels are spinning at different speeds. It's like if Phil Collins was drumming faster than Peter Gabriel could play the flute. It's just not going to sound good. The problem on high traction surfaces like roads or densely packed dirt, where the slower wheels can't slip and catch up to the faster ones, it causes a tension buildup known as binding or wind up, and that can be bad for your car. Very bad. So how's the problem wind up solved? Differentials. Differentials are mechanisms that allow one drive shaft to independently drive two output shafts, and they can be mechanical or hydraulic, and that prevents stress on the drive shaft that happens when one wheel spins slower than the other. If you want to know about, about differentials, check out our video. Now, how about them all-wheel drivetrains? But before we get to them all-wheel drivetrains, why don't you take a second and subscribe to our channel. It's how we get to make such cool stuff for you. It's what keeps the lights on and puts food on the table. You gotta be quicker than that, Nolan. Full-time four-wheel drive is the oldest of the all-wheel drivetrain. This system usually only refers to large trucks and SUVs. Full-time means that all the wheels are spinning all of the time with an interaxle differential. The torque split of that differential could be fixed or variable, depending on the type of center differential. I'm kind of like the full-time 4x4 drivetrain and donut, because I'm here all the time 
I'm the oldest, and in my spare time, I like to drive trains. 4x4s have three differentials, one between the front wheels, one between the rear wheels, and one to account for different tire rotations and speeds, also known as the limited slip differential. This boxy boy allows the wheels to keep spinning at different speeds, eliminating wind-up. Full-time four-wheel drive is the most reliable for off-road driving, but it's less desirable on surfaces with good traction. The brother to this system is the part-time four-wheel drive train. Funny story, my first part-time job was delivering horse meat to the school for blind children. They paid me in bones. Best job I ever had. Part-time four-wheel drive is the most common type of four-wheel drive on modern cars. In a nutshell, it gives you the option of switching between powering two wheels or all four. Hence the name part-time. This makes it easy to go from street to trees in one quick shift. Another Perfect anagram. Part-time systems use a transfer case that switches between the drive system. An example of this is switching from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high lock to four-wheel drive low lock. Four-wheel drive high lock means that the torque is distributed evenly between the front axle and the rear. 50% to the front, 50% to the rear. Locked means that all the wheels are rotating at the same speed. Gear's got a one-to-one -one torque ratio and should only be used when you're off-roading, not on densely packed ground. Because of what we learned earlier about wind-up. Four-wheel drive low lock has a high torque ratio and is meant for slow off-road crawls up steep, slippery mountain and hills. Su 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 dio. We mentioned it's the transfer case where the power gets shared between the front and back wheels. In a system that can switch between four-wheel and rear-wheel drive, there's some gears in the transfer case that make that happen. When the drive chain is engaged, it sends power to the front wheels, sharing it with the rear. When it's not engaged, that power goes straight to either the rear differential or the front differential, depending on the design. But usually it's the rear, because it's easier. Look, it just goes straight back instead of having to reroute. In cars that run full-time all-wheel drive, like an Audi or Subaru, there's no locking mechanism. Instead, there's a torsion differential that shares power between front and back, sending it where it's most effective. The word torsion comes from torque sensing. So, using oil pressure, if it senses torque loss in one of the output shafts, it'll send more power somewhere else. Some cars, like the Focus RS, electronically control the power sharing. So sometimes, it can be a 50-50 front and back, and sometimes, like in drift mode, it's almost all the rear wheels! The all-wheel drive designation has been synonymous with four-wheel drive since as early as the 1920. But nowadays, all-wheel drive basically means permanent multiple wheel drive. These drivetrains are the safest on all surfaces, but less desirable for extreme off-roading. Permanent means that you couldn't switch to two-wheel drive even if you wanted to. One downside of this system is that powering all four wheels at the same time whew, means you're using a lot of gas. Some all-wheel drive vehicles use two motors, one for each axle. An example of this is the Tesla Model S. Another drivetrain that's less common, but still considered all-wheel drive is IWD, or Individual Wheel Drive. Every wheel's got its own motor, and that's connected to the car's computer, and that can adjust individual torque levels in milliseconds. This system's almost exclusively associated with electric motors. Examples include the SLS AMG Electric and the six-wheeled Mars Rover. Heck, I gotta take a spin in a four-wheel one that could go all kinds of crazy directions. Why you'd want to roam around that dusty planet's beyond me. I'm fine with Earth, thank you very much. We got horse meat here. So, if we've learned anything here today, it's that Phil Collins and Peter Gabriel are not the same person. And all-wheel drive systems are different than four-wheel drive systems. Next time you're off-roading a 4x4, remember these words. I can't dance, I can't sing, I just stand here selling everything. I'm Phil Collins. Thanks to Bombfell for sponsoring this episode. Bombfell is an easier way for men to get better clothes. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking part. You only wear one shirt and I'm pretty sure you're not wearing any pants under there. Well, you'd be wrong. Michael emailed me his selections. I gave my input and it shipped. And uh, Michael's got pretty good taste. But he could have made any changes if I wanted or even canceled altogether. Oh, and they got a cool policy called keep more, get more, where the more you keep, the more you save. When I got the clothes, I had seven days to tell them what I thought, what I wanted to keep, and I could have sent the rest back. The more you keep, the more you save. You keep four, you get 20% off. Keep three, you get 15% off. Keep two or more, you get 10% off. Bart, we're in total control. Then, when I got the clothes, I got seven days to tell them what I want to keep. Then, you could send the rest back. God, that sounds so convenient. Man, I wonder what my life would be like if I didn't get in touch with Bonfell. What's up, Bart? What? I make my own clothes. I don't have time to shop. 
Because I'm such a likable guy, I convinced Bombfell to offer $25 off your first purchase if you head to bombfell.com slash science garage. Guys, it's totally flexible. You get clothes when you want, you can pause it or cancel it at any time. They don't charge above retail price. You get free shipping and returns, home try on, and then you can preview your stylist picks before it even sends to you. That's B O M B F E L L dot com slash science garage. Bombfell. Open, Open and close. close. Guys, please subscribe. Click this button. That shows us you love us. It helps us keep making content that hopefully you want to see. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me at Bits Bardo. Check out our new Miracle Whips. We're really excited about it. Hey, Byron. And check out this episode of Up to Speed. Don't tell my wife how bad the mileage is on the STI. <laughs>